Yeah, Peru, uh, all behind Renzo, I'm sure, just really trying to represent that region and push that country to the top of the standings. You've seen them already today, but another reminder of the teams, Leonardo's team with that Registeel that's been causing so many problems, the, the Landorus and the Moltres that have been interchanging when it comes to Dynamaxing, rounding it out with the Regilecki, the Grimstar and the Spectre as well, which has been a very popular lead for him, causing a number of problems. Renzo's team, a uh, couple more really defensive options, that Tapu Fini that's managed to clutch him out games by car minding, taking attacks and firing back with muddy waters. The Amoongus, don't forget that pollen puff play that he's been able to do so many times next to something like the Landorus, next to that Galarian Moltres, just keeping things on the field. And then of course the Regilecki and Incineroar as well. So really nicely rounded teams. Uh, just put together so well and honestly have been played to the best of their abilities by both of them. We've got to see a little bit more of Renzo's team purely because he's played so many more games with it. But Leonardo clearly knows his matchups inside and out. A straight run through winners, only dropping actually one game across the whole thing. Yeah, and I'm really excited to see how these players approach this. I mean, as you said earlier, Renzo had so many more games to get to this point, and not only are players bringing a team that they're comfortable with, but being able to get that amount of games in against a variety of different things and being able to just get all of that extra practice might fare him really, really well heading into the finals. Well, it's time to see if practice makes perfect for Renzo or if Leonardo is going to be able to push things one step further than he was able to in Players Cup 3. This is exactly where he was before, winner's side of the grand finals. We know how that one went. I'm not going to bring it up to just before the finals. We're going to head on into the game and see exactly how it pans out. We're going to be watching this one from Leonardo's side with Renzo on the other side of the screen as the leads take the field. And to be leading off the Globals final match, Reggie Lackey coming out to play for both players here, but is going to be paired with Incineroar on Renzo's end, but Spectre on Leonardo's. This is a lead that we've seen a number of times from both of these players over the course of the tournament. Able to, you know, put down some potentially big damage, nice and early on with the Regilecki, pivot around with those vault switches as well. And the, the Spectre has also provided a number of really unique, or not unique, but useful support moves. You know, being able to throw down taunts, making sure that it can't set things up. If any physical attackers come in, making sure that they're limited in what they can do by something like the Will-O-Wisp as well. There's also the speed control to talk about. The speed control coming out from Renzo's Regia Lecky and dealing a nice amount of chip damage to both of these Pokemon, but is going to be matched with a move from Leonardo's own Regia Lecky, going for a Volt Switch, just looking to pivot out and get a little bit of a different board position. And we get a little sneak into what he's brought into the back. There is that infamous Landorus Registeel combination, and the Landorus is going to be hitting the field here. Intimidate drop on the opposing Incineroar as well. Getting that Intimidate down really nice and something we've talked about a lot throughout the course of this tournament is making sure your Landorus is in a premium position to be able to sweep through the game. Bringing it in after the lead and making sure that it doesn't get caught by something like the Intimidate on the opening turn of the game, really, really helpful. Incineroar just weaves in a little bit of extra damage with that Flare Blitz, no knockouts and a, a reposition for Leonardo, gets the Landorus in completely safely in the face of the Regieleki as well. We know about the Registeel in the back. We know there's that potential play where you just start throwing out the max airstreams, getting that Registeel up to speed as well. Uh, but you kind of want to you know, get that in safely as well. And that's something I think Leonardo is going to be thinking about a lot. Uh, maybe trying to remove a couple of those threats early on uh, and see how much this Spectre can do. I mean, it's still, even after the Electro, a pretty fast. Renzo seeing this, realizing it's time for him to make an adjustment as well. Yeah, these Landorses have been so big in the competition. All the pivots being able to get those Intimidate drops, especially in the face of a Dynamax, which Leonardo is going for. Going for that early pressure here, getting that speed control, be oh so important. Being able to get the Intimidate down though was really important for Renzo, making sure that this Dynamax Landorus on Leonardo's side isn't gonna be as causing many problems as it has done in the past. You know, it's been so good when it gets in cleanly, just setting up and causing problems. So uh, that's a really big win there, I think, is getting that in, uh, Intimidate down on his side. Started to pick up a knockout as well uh, and get his Regilecki off the field. So this is looking good for Renzo, but it's over to this Landorus. 
You know, speaking of a big win, being able to take care of that Spectre, we've seen how problematic it's been in the past, and being able to not only pick up the KO, but get the pivot into the Incineroar is so nice. We've seen Renzo do so much with that double Intimidate core, and sure enough, being able to put all this pressure on the landers, look how little damage that is doing to the Incineroar here at the Airstream. It is getting the Airstream boost, but that is a Life Orb Landerous dealing very little amount of damage. Double Intimidate is back and it's apparently here to stay because it's been running through this tournament causing so many problems and this is the gamble that I think uh, Leonardo made that he wanted to get going, start getting these max airstreams up into play but he's just eating Intimidates. The manual switch out kind of forced, that Spectre is torn early and the parting shot wasn't available so being able to kind of change that up, manually switch out and then get a, a switch out on the turn with the Vault switch Two Intimidates down, this lander is really not hurting, and Renzo's hasn't had that same same problem really. You know, in a really good position, hasn't taken any Intimidates right now, and Leonardo doesn't have an option to kind of match that, if you will. So, Renzo throwing up the Dynamax himself, probably going to be feeling in a good position, and may be able as well to start matching these max airstreams while doing more damage. Don't forget that Incineroar's just come in and has options to cause chaos on its first turn. Yeah, Landers can be so strong as an Intimidate or Dynamax option, but Leonardo using that up definitely puts Rando in a good position to be maxing there, and Incineroar being able to be in a good position to go for that fake out as well. So Reggie Lecky not doing much, and Airstream just dealing so little damage. Yes, Leonardo is getting that speed and is being able to get that speed control in this match, but Renzo has a Landorus to be able to match that, as we see here, going to be going hitting to Landorus and doing a lot more damage. He's got to start matching and catching up with these airstream boosts, and if you're going to be doing them uh, in the, the old-fashioned way, just attacking each other as Landorus, you want to be doing more damage, and that is how important it is to keep your Landorus from being heavily intimidated. You can't just be throwing out these max airstreams and then, of course, you know, not doing enough damage. The Landorus over on Renzo's side took it really well. And Leonardo knows, even though he may be able to get a third max airstream, it's just not worth it. His Landorus has to get back when it's not been intimidated twice. Yeah, you have to capitalize off of the three turns of max and not being able to capitalize off of the last one, just opting to bring that Registeel out and just take out that Incineroar. So taking away one of the Intimidate options on Renzo's end here. But Airstream, of course, coming out into the Registeel, but what a nice switch. This Registeel is going to take that very well. Oh uh, yeah, the Registeel is a perfect switch in to something like the Max Airstream, but at the end of the day, the Landorus is still getting the boost and it's not particularly threatened right now by either of the Pokemon on Leonardo's side of the field. So probably feeling pretty good about being able to make a big play on its third turn of Dynamax. That third turn, don't forget, something that Leonardo just gave up on with his Landorus. His Landorus switched out to avoid the Max Airstream. Yes, the Registeel took it better, but you're giving up your Max Airstream boosts. They weren't really benefiting the Regieleki. It's very, very fast already. So kind of an, an awkward position. And now you've got two Pokemon on Leonardo's side of the field, neither of which are gonna appreciate a Max Quake. And to be honest, are gonna struggle because of the two Airstream boosts that that Landorus has already picked up. So forcing a safe play out of Leonardo here. Yeah, the Protect on the Registeel, not wanting to risk anything at all as Reggie Alecki is risking it all Ooh. with a big attack into the Galarian Moltres, but it holds on and it is going to be getting those boosts. You're gonna see the Weakness Policy boost and on top of that, the Berserk boost. So not being able to pick up that KO is so big and in return, this Regieleki is being taken out. So you have the scariest Pokemon on Renzo's side here. You have a three Airstream boosted Landorus and you have this Moltres with all the special attack boosts and the speed to match. Getting that extra speed boost. Yes, a Max Quake probably would have been great to, to try and, <laughs> oh dearie me, to try and get the, uh, you know, a guaranteed knockout or even a knockout through the Protect. But knowing that your Moltres can take that Thunderbolt from Regieleki and stay on the field and get, uh, that's now five boosts to the special attack. It gets the speed boost from that kind of cheeky Max Airstream, and that's going to make it very, very fast and very, very scary now. Uh, if it's able to connect an attack, which wouldn't shock me based on the speed boost that it got, uh, it's just going to be picking up knockouts. It's got a spread move in Fiery Wrath, 
and it's just going to be able to tidy this one up if, of course, the Landorus on Renzo's side of the field doesn't get there first, which is sitting on the field with three of the speed boosts as well. So a lot to answer with just this back two from Leonardo. We've seen Registeels put on a, a clinic in, in clutching out games, but I just don't think it's got enough in the tank. It's going to be up to Leonardo to try and weave in attacks and, and honestly, just avoid getting hit by this Moltres because that Moltres is going to start taking knockouts easily on the Landorus. That Registeel isn't exactly safe either. I don't think there's much that has... I don't think there's any Pokemon that has much in the tank to deal with a plus five Moltres here. And Renzo's Landers being able to fire off a Earthquake first is going to be chipping down that Registail. And here it is, this Fiery Wrath. Oh. Absolutely <laughs> terrifying. Taking out both of Leonardo's Pokemon here. The scariest bird I've ever seen. And these two Pokemon are just snowballing this match. Oh yeah, one speed boost was all that Moltres actually needed and, and was able, yeah, there was a nice little earthquake and the Reggie Steel was like, yeah, I can take that. But the follow-up with the uh, the Fiery Wrath, yeah, you, you're not dealing with that one. Uh, being able to come in and take that Thunderbolt from Reggie Alecki, that's a big ask on the Moltres, but getting your weakness policy, getting the Berserk boost and the Nasty Plot all <laughs> in one turn, along with the speed boost from Max Airstream, absolutely insane and, and the end game there just thought of very very well must have been confident he was going to be able to get rid of that regieleki because if the regieleki was there next turn would have just been able to to deal with the moltres but uh renzo is setting up perfectly for this end game moltres double knockout yeah, I mean, that was the most terrifying Moltres I've ever seen. A plus three Moltres, getting that weakness policy, getting the Berserk boost, that was terrifying enough. And Renzo taking that opportunity to set up even further to just really close out that end game to take the lead here it was absolutely huge. So it's all on Leonardo now to how he's going to adjust into the game too. Let's get into this because he needs to switch something up to make sure this Moltres in the back doesn't fiery wrath its way to a reset. And don't give me a switch off the lead. We're gonna see for Renzo a Reggie Lucky Incineroar, and it's going to be paired off against a Reggie Lucky and Spectre on Leonardo's end. Yeah, nice and same and safe for both of these players, knowing exactly what they can do with this. I think the Spectre is probably gonna be asked to, to put in a little bit more of a shift than it was the last time. Uh, really didn't get much done before getting knocked out in that game, so it has to be careful. And once again, the, the change has to be from Leonardo don't let your landers come in and get double intimidated. It's just not worth it at that point. It, you're not getting enough done with it when it's been intimidated twice. And then you had to give up your speed boosts and switch it out just to keep it safe from the opposing landers. So really got to watch that, really got to play around that, but no immediate switching on this turn. And Cinderella this time around going for Ooh. that fake out, but Electroweb going to miss off of that Spectre is getting some more chip and, of course, speed drop onto the Reg Regieleki, but not a miss you necessarily want. Does it speed still, though? Shadow Ball coming out, picking up a really good amount of damage onto that Regieleki in return. That Regieleki is going to get felled by another Shadow Ball. It's definitely going to be the faster Regieleki, though. At least the Electroweb landed onto the opposing Regieleki. Uh, but this now puts a, a little bit of awkward pressure on the, the Spectre. Does it go for the knockout on the Regieleki, which was only really good for pivoting last time, you know, landing those Volt Switches. Uh, maybe able to Volt Switch away um, from one of these. It seems to be keen to just keep going with the Electrowebs, though, and make sure it's the fastest one on the field. Yeah, it's another speed drop onto Leonardo's Reggie at Lucky here and bringing it right down to the red, real close to being a Ode, but not quite as it gets to fire off a Purple in return into Renzo's Reggie at Lucky and taking it down once and for all. And Vector, still faster, of course, having missed last time around with the Shadow Ball just for some extra little chip into this Incineroar. But Incineroar, not like taking that really well and is just going to be pivoting out with a farting shot. Yep. This is actually quite good though for Leonardo, getting rid of the Regieleki um, and being able to remove one of those quick pivot options, especially when it's the fastest Regieleki on the field, you know, could always see things that get out of there really, really early on, bringing in those Intimidates when needed. So I, I like that Leonardo targeted that down quite aggressively, said actually that caused me a few problems, and now this could be a complete reverse of what we saw in game one. The Landorus on Renzo's side comes out first, so Leonardo knows if he brings his Landorus in at any point, which he could do with his Regieleki potentially pivoting out with a Volt Switch, um, you know, then he'd be able to uh, get a, an Intimidate down on Landorus and give Renzo a taste of what it was like in game one. Of course, Renzo still has the Incineroar in the back, 
uh, that he managed to get away safely with the parting shot. No taunt shutting that down this time. Um, but it does mean, you know, that the pivot options are limited. There's a little more information that Leonardo can take in, in maybe planning out the next few turns, getting his Landorus in safely, and then being able to, to run away with the game, kind of like Renzo did in game number one. So uh, good targeting down on the Regilecki. I do like to see it just removed from play nicer and early. You don't want it just slowing everything down. Um, and, and it's going to put him in a much better position now he's, he's got the Pokemon advantage. Yeah, big decisions being made here. Which is the bigger threat? And Ladarus is going ahead and saying, look at me, I'm a threat, going to go for it, that sword stance. And Moltres just taking the opportunity to go for a big pyrograph. It's speeding, being able to take out the Reggie like he easily, it was barely holding on anyways, and dealing a lot of damage to this Spectre. It does survive though, so it does get the opportunity to go for a Shadow Ball into Landorus, picking up um, a good healthy amount of HP, but this Landorus is definitely scary after that boost. We've seen this before though with Leonardo, his Spectre targeting down those Landorus quite aggressively with the Shadow Ball, making them think a little bit more before they're given the opportunity to, to maybe, you know, just Dynamax at full health. Leonardo's is in the perfect spot right now. Full health, not intimidated yet. There is, of course, an Intimidator in the back, but it's in a great position now. Uh, this definitely gives Renzo a choice. Do you maybe go for the Moltres as the Dynamax? I imagine it's still going to be the Landorus, and I do like that he prepared and, and thought ahead a little bit there by looking at it and sword dancing before that Intimidate came in. So he does have a little wiggle room, and he is technically on paper the stronger Landorus. But he's lower on health. Leonardo's hasn't been intimidated yet, and that's something he really needs to think about. No switching around this turn, though, as the Dynamaxes start coming through. Leonardo's moving first. Of course, but there's going to be going for a Dynamax to match here. Both players looking to apply that pressure from the same time. This is the moment of the match, and it will be that Landorus. I mean, this has been such a reoccurring theme here in Players' Cup 4 is these Max Landoruses. And Global Finals is going to be absolutely no exception to that. And it all starts here. Leonardo being able to attack with full force this time, not getting those drops, stealing a lot more damage. Breed Renzo's Landorus down really, really close, but unable to quite secure the KO. But what Landers can't do, the Spectre can. Shadow Ball targeting into the Landers and all of that damage that it got with that Shadow Ball before are going to be so critical here as Renzo doesn't get to capitalize off of his max at all. That was not a safe uh, Dynamax Landorus at all. It had already taken so much damage on the Sword Stance turn. Yes, you wanted to deal with the Intimidate, but you took so much from the Shadow Ball that you were quite easy to get picked off. Leonardo running that really, really fast Landorus. The Spectre making up for that earlier drop from Electro with a really wise, really heads up uh, Max Airstream. Yes, we know that it's going to come through, but you've got to assume that the follow-up damage could come in as well. So really, really well played there by Leonardo to get back in the game. And Renzo is going to struggle without any Dynamax turns used up. Didn't even land a single attack, a single Max Airstream. And I can imagine that Leonardo should just be able to run away with this one now. At least to slow down this Landorus a little bit. And Sinora did come in and get the Intimidate drop, but with that Landorus on Renzo's end already being taken out, the double Intimidate core is not going to be a threat here. And the Moltres got to set up last time. It got to get those speed boosts, and it's lacking those this time around, which definitely hurt. And Renzo not wanting to feel the wrath of Leonardo's Moltres, just going for that fake out. And we're done with the Airstream boost. We're going for straight damage. We're going for those special defense boosts. And this big Max Quake is going to be coming out into the Incineroar. Well, you've already got the advantage kind of uh, speed-wise. So why not start setting up the special defense boost to deal with this Galarian Moltres at the end? Yes, of course, uh, you know, it is going to be the, the only hope remaining. And if it's going to do something, it's going to need to nasty plot. The problem is, right now, it's moving slower than this Landorus because of those earlier uh, Max Airstream boosts. You know, it's just definitely way behind. And the Moltres is going to need to hit pretty much everything perfectly. I don't even think it's going to be afforded the opportunity to do that, though, with uh, Leonardo just going after it with these attacks. Uh, being very wise, though, I think with Leonardo's choices here, just to make sure that it doesn't get caught out by, uh, you know, the, the weakness policy and then firing back, um, just protecting, but still, Leonardo taking advantage of that and getting another speed boost. No doubt in his mind now that he's going to be the fastest thing on the field. 
Yeah, that's a tall ask from this Moltres on Renzo's end. I mean, it did so much last game, but also just this game, Leonardo just has to be targeting it down and with all the speed boost in a really, really strong position to do so. Well, they're back to regular size now, if you will, but they've got <laughs> the speed boosts, you know, a special defense boost weaved in there as well from the earlier Max Quake. See no reason that these two shouldn't be able to round out this game. Renzo, though, wants to take it the distance, not throwing in the towel, uh, maybe just trying to learn a little bit more. That rock slide doing a huge amount of damage. Single target will obviously activate weakness policy and berserk, but I'm pretty sure that the Moltres over on Leonardo's side should be able to deal with that. If it doesn't, things could get very interesting, though. And th there again, this is another plus five boosted Moltres. Ooh. Absolutely terrifying. It lives, though. It's not going down to the air slash, but of course, Leonardo's Moltres resists that hit. It does take out the landers, but Leonardo being able to outspeed will be able to take this, but it's definitely a very scary position. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely a, a, a nice attempt to fire back with that huge stat boost. But, you know, you're just not able to do enough uh, when it comes down to it. So, uh, you know, just getting it all the way there. The Moltres, of course, on Leonardo's side, much faster and able to just tidy this one up. Of course, so we are going to be having a one victory on each side. Moltres proving to be so valuable in each match um, for each different player in different ways. But I think where it all went wrong for Renzo there was that max turn. That Landris, you never want to waste a boost, but at the same time, you wasted the boost and the Dynamax going for that. And I can't help but think there may be a better, better option, maybe that Moltres or pivoting it out to maybe wait it out because that put Leonardo into the driver's seat to really start tearing that match away. Now, that turn was a bit of a shocker, really. I mean, uh, you know, you took so much damage from the Shadow Ball, you went for the Dynamax, and you just weren't able to do anything with it. And it really comes back to uh, how you play your Landorus in this mirror. Now, in that game, I really like the way that it was mixed up. Um, I do like the Leolado left the Registeel at home, but you want to be bringing your Landorus second, kind of, so you can avoid the Intimidates. And I think, uh, you know, really Leonardo has to worry about it because of those Intimidates uh, that there's two of. But we saw the problem. Even though the Swords Dance went up, you know, the, the Landorus came out first for Renzo and then was targeted down very aggressively. That Shadow Ball uh, making, you know, really good damage on it on the turn it was trying to Swords Dance because it knew it was about to get intimidated. So a lot of setup going into it there. And then Leonardo very rightfully being able to push this one down. Most importantly, that takes this set to one and one. If Leonardo wins this, he's gonna be your Players' Cup 4 champion. If Renzo wins this, we're going to a bracket reset and we're gonna be playing another best of three set. So it really all comes down to just this one game. It's all on the line here. Let's start getting into the match. I mean, both players playing for everything right now. We've seen Renzo be making these comebacks, but we've seen Leonardo with these decisive victories through this bracket. So this is going to be the battle of all battles here. And it's going to be the same leads from each player, but I'm so excited to see what changes they're going to be bringing to this match. They seem to be very comfortable with these leads and they play them so well. They know all of the options and it's definitely a mind game to think about. Uh, Renzo last time playing it very cautiously with his Reggie Alecki, actually just throwing out the Electro webs. And what I liked before was him having the option to deal with that, pivot it around a little bit and, and be able to, you know, get an Intimidate in when he needed them. But both the Reggie Alecki playing it safe. And neither player wanting to risk anything when Everything is on the line here. It's just, I mean, out. It will be a Flare Blitz from Renzo's Incineroar into the Spectre, be dealing some good damage to try and be chipping that down. The Spectre with those Shadow Balls did so much work in the last game, and the sooner it could be out of here, the better. I think the Spectre is a target uh, that needs to be kind of respected a little bit there. Uh, just definitely thinking about it and, and really, you know, you can't let it sit on the field and cause problems. You don't want the Will-O-Wisp to be there for when the Landorus comes in. So uh, definite caution around the Spectria. And I like that change of priority from Renzo. Uh, realizing what a problem it can cause. Uh, doesn't want it to be trapping anything in there with something like the Taunt. Uh, so just going after it with a, a big amount of damage. Really, really wise. And Leonardo uh, using a bit of a pivot on his own Reggie Alecki here. Yeah, a little sneak peek of what's at the back as well. No Registeel again this time around knowing that Moltres is a very strong candidate to be getting this victory. And Landorus 
will be hitting the field. Reggie Alecki just targeting into the Spectre, though. The Spectre going down a lot sooner than last game, and that is going to be huge for Renzo moving forward into this match. And Incineroar, not taunted, gets to go for the parting shot onto Leonardo's freshly brought in Landorus, getting the chance to pivot out, but also starting it off with an attack drop. That's going to really start wearing down this Landorus, and it comes back to the point we're talking about between games. If you bring your Landorus in first, it's liable to get intimidated. That's one Intimidator uh, that we've already seen. It didn't get to intimidate the Landorus, but it got to land a parting shot on it. Now here comes the Intimidate from the Landorus on Renzo's side. And guess what? His Regieleki still has Volt Switch and is able to get out and bring in the Incineroar for another Intimidate. So there's a lot going on when it comes to dealing with this Landorus. And as long as you're dealing with the opposing Landorus, uh, if you're Renzo, your Landorus is pretty safe because that, um, that Regieleki that he's just put in can't do anything about it. It's definitely a weird position to be in. Being able to go for the max last time around with the Landorus was so big, being able to put that pressure without the drops. But bringing it in so early this time around, it's an intimidate or be intimidated type of world out there. And this Landorus is not looking so good, especially in the face of Renzo's Landorus, which has its full attack stat and has all of its HP. Well, now this forces a switch from Leonardo, which I think is something, if you're Renzo, you really want to be capitalizing on. Uh, either a turn where he would be setting up a uh, Swords Dance, uh, or just a turn where he, you know, maybe is going to have to do less damage. You've got to take advantage of that. And Renzo didn't Dynamax this turn. Let's just think about what he's going for for a second here. Uh, now he's seen, of course, the Landorus uh, leave the field. He gets a little more information before he makes his switch. Still brings in the Incineroar, wanting to keep what is probably his Galarian Moltres for a little bit later. So a lot going on there. And yeah, this, this Incineroar is going to take the Thunderbolt much better than the Galarian Moltres. <laughs> going to be taking a Thunderbolt, but it's also going to be taking that Paralysis. And with that Incineroar being targeted into and Leonardo opting to switch, it means it's going to be a very free turn for Renzo to start setting up his Landorus. So sure, Leonardo has that Intimidate pressure in the back on the swap in, but it's only going to be bringing this Landorus down to a plus one, which is still a very comfortable place for it to be. Oh, this Landorus on Renzo's side is terrifying. Only one Intimidator available on Leonardo's side. It's got a Swords Dance up actually entirely for free. Think about what's happened in previous games. When the Landorus takes damage on that Swords Dance turn, it struggles, but it's now got away with it. It's got a full health bar. The Incineroar just switched in. Yeah, it got paralyzed, but it will have access to a little bit of Fake Out as well. So this may force a change up of game plan from Leonardo. Uh, you know, maybe wanting to bring in that Landorus but, you know, the Landorus on Renzo's side is about to do a whole lot more, I think. And the Landorus being forced in in place of the Regieleki, if Renzo has read into this and is able to take advantage of this, this could get really dangerous really quickly. Oh, for sure. Positioning is everything, and Renzo being in a fantastic position to go for that Dynamax. Leonardo, of course, went for that switch, bringing that Landorus out, but despite the Intimidate, this is still such a fantastic turret and so much better than last time around. It has an attack boost. It's taken absolutely no damage and is at no risk of being taken out. But Leonardo going to match with that Galarian Moltres. Love this adaptation from Leonardo, making sure that even though you had to switch in your Landorus, you knew that switching was going to be a difficult one. So mixing it up with the Dynamax. Very good team from both of them that has access to two good Dynamax candidates. And the Moltres can match in those max airstreams as well. So being able to make those plays and keep it up, really, really important. That said though, the Landorus on Leonardo's side, yeah, you got to intimidate it, but that's not enough. <laughs> Yeah, Intimidate option now being completely wiped off of the field as a max airstream's coming out from Renzo and is just going to easily clean up that KO. So that's a huge hit for Leonardo here. It's going to fire off an airstream in return, but it's only bringing this Landorus down to about half. Yes, you're matching the airstream boost, but you're going to then get that parting shot as well. So this is not the best position here. And this comes down to look how strong Renzo's uh, Landorus is right now. Plus one, no way of bringing that down in the attack. 
at all. The next Pokemon coming in from Leonardo you know is the Regieleki, so you can just spend all your time dealing with this Galarian Moltres. And to help out with that, really wisely, the Parting Shot out from the Incineroar. Not only the Parting Shot out, you also get your Regieleki in, which is going to be able to do massive damage to this Galarian Moltres, and you know that you're going first with your Airstream, so you'll be able to get your Regieleki and Airstream boost as well. The Regieleki on Leonardo's side, just not a threat right now at all, because guess what? It can't touch this Landorus, so it's the only thing it can deal with is the opposing Regieleki, and the Landorus on Renzo's side probably just going to leave it alone for a little bit. Um, maybe if he could call a potential Protect, or Max Guard actually, from the Galarian Moltres, then throw down the Max Airstream at the Regieleki, Renzo could wrap this one up even quicker, but I think after that first turn, it just, it's really Renzo's favour, especially because this Galarian Moltres took the parting shot. Of course, but Renzo, looking to play it a little safe here, is going to go for that protect on the Reggie Alecki, and good thing as Reggie Alecki on Leonardo's end, targeting into it. So now, Landorus on Renzo's end, free to fire off another Max Airstream, take out the Reggie Alecki to leave this poor Moltres. Yes, it is in Dynamax form, but leaving it all alone on the field. Yeah, it's stuck on the field with a minus one in both of its attacks too, most importantly the special attack. Yes, it gets to match with the Max Airstream, but look how useful that parting shot was. That Landorus just doesn't care at all. And now that Regieleki's got to benefit from a speed boost as well. Gonna make sure it's just right back on top, even when the opposing Pokemon are throwing out attacks, trying to get that down. Leonardo knows if he wants to win it, uh, take it all, he's gotta win this game. So he is still very much going for it, but Renzo absolutely in the driving seat right now as Regieleki just gets to go after this Galarian Moltres. Yeah, Renzo going for it with a huge hit there, though it is going to be activating this weakness policy and the Berserk boost. We've seen how dangerous these can be, but first it has to withstand this hit from the Landorus. It's going to be a huge hit and it's going to be taken out. Renzo taking down that Galarian Moltres and is going to be taking this 2-1 and I think we all know what's about to happen next. It's the bracket reset. They're going to be playing again. Renzo, really, really good bounce back from game number two where he never quite got a footing in it. Lost his Dynamax super, super early and bounced back beautifully in 